Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's discussion, why sales coaching is more important than sales managing. My name is Amir, and I am a community manager at Bright Talk, and I will be your moderator for today. I'm excited to be joined by my former manager today, and before I do introduce him, I wanted to go over just a few quick notes about this presentation and specifically the Bright Talk platform. So today's webinar will be recorded and will be available on demand. It will also be accessible through the same URL that you are currently on, or you can also access it through the social sharing icons. Now, if you guys have a question at any point during today's presentation, please feel free to submit questions via the Ask a Question tab, which is located at the top left of the player. We will have a Q&A at the end of the discussion where we will try to address any questions which have been submitted. So today's speaker, um, I have Brandon Burdick, um, my former manager. We used to work together at an ad tech company called Bizzo back in 2012. And we also worked together um, at LinkedIn in 2014 when Bizzo was acquired by them. And Brandon was my sales manager for about two years. Um, so Brandon, uh, welcome today. And do you mind just quickly introducing yourself, uh, just talk a little bit about the company you're at currently and your role? Sure. Thanks, Amir. Uh, uh, as Amir said, my name is Brandon Burdick, and I am currently with a company in Kansas City called People Admin, and we are a um, software company that provides uh, K through 12 and higher education uh, with their talent management solutions. And currently over here, I am uh, running a uh, marketing development team, which is similar to uh, a sales development team, if that term uh, means more to you. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Brandon. Uh, excited to have you on. Uh, so, so sales coaching is is a topic that has been coming up a lot lately um, over the past three to four years. And honestly, it's a very important topic, especially for new sales managers who used to be individual sales contributors. Um, it's obviously important as well for new sales reps. And it's it's really important that I think sales managers are able to provide a systematic approach to training reps. Um, sales training has to be an ongoing process, and for the most part, um, and in my experience in the past being in sales, um, and just in general, I think most companies only train their reps um, during like that ramp period. So that could be anywhere from a month to three months. Um, so I think that you know every sales rep, as well as every manager, has room for growth. So sales managers must focus you know, more on the, the coaching aspect so they can continuously empower their teams, um, not only to attain quota, but to exceed it. Um, whenever I think of like the responsibilities of a sales manager, uh, you typically think of like setting team goals, forecasting, uh, recruiting, hiring, performance management, uh, leadership, of course, and I, what I think is one of the most important aspects, coaching. And I think for the most part, in my experience, again, um, you know, a lot of sales managers typically only focus on hitting your number and, you know, attaining quota. And so in my opinion, I think sales managers must focus a little less on the numbers and focus on the development of the sales reps on a personal level as well as a professional standpoint. Um, so my first question for you, Brandon, uh, in your opinion, what is the main difference between sales coaching and sales managing? Yeah, so uh, I, th I think there's a, a big difference. Um, you know, really managing comes down to basically the numbers. It's, uh, you know, watching uh, the KPIs and, and the activity that your team is doing um, and in, in order to hit their goals. So looking at, uh, you know, on the SDR side, it's, it's looking at the, the number of opportunities that are created, the number of opportunities that are accepted. So you're looking at those conversion rates. Um, so it's it's just really you know keeping your team on track um, towards that goal. Uh, where coaching is you know actually giving them, giving them the abilities and the, and the skills in order to achieve those goals. So helping to to improve their phone skills, uh, to improve their prospecting, uh, teaching them to uh, use the the tools that they have available to to get that get the job done. Right, right, and so. Can you can you elaborate a little more um, about your specific approach to sales coaching? Um, what does strategic sales coaching mean to you specifically, and and why do you think it's very important? Yeah, so um, mo most of my management experience, 
ha- has been in the SDR or, or MDR world. Uh, so the, the coaching or, or training that I, I do is is often the, the first exposure that, that many of the, these young professionals have to sales. Um, and just going into that knowing that the, the coaching that I'm giving them now uh, is is going to point them in the right direction as they move uh, forward in their sales career. Um, or if they they get into a position, since this is such a, a junior level position, um, they, they may realize that uh, sales might not be the path for them. So then the coaching moves from, you know, teaching the skills to uh, the career path. And um, one of the one of the greatest lessons I learned at LinkedIn, uh, they, they have an excellent uh, manager training program there, and uh, we use or we use the the Grow model uh, of coaching there. And if you're not familiar with it, uh, Grow stands for uh, Goal, Reality, Options, and Will. So it, it's basically, you know, finding out those goals, whether it's the career path or whether it's a skill that they're wanting to learn. Um, the reality is where are they right now and, and what gaps do they need to fill in to, to reach that goal? Uh, options is um, everything everything that they could possibly do to reach that goal. And then the will is of those options, what are they willing to do? What next steps are they willing to take in order to reach that? Great, yeah. And I, I think that's awesome that you that you focus on the individual rep personally and, and professionally. Um, I feel like that's very refreshing. And so I specifically found it reassuring that you always supported me too as well when we worked together at Bizzo. Um, Cause before you even hired me, you knew that I wanted to transition into a marketing role. Um, so you, you supported that decision and you tried to help me grow within that function and allowed me to do some side projects like write for the blog, even though uh, no other sales rep was actually doing that. So I, I really appreciated that in terms of my growth and my development. Um, so speaking of, of hiring process, so um, can you talk a little bit about the traits that you look for when you're trying to hire, I guess, the right salesperson for your teams? Sure. And, and I'm going to sound really cliche here, uh, but sometimes cliches are just the truth. Um, so uh, two things that I really look for are, you know, that strong worth, work ethic and someone who is, in fact, coachable. Um, you know, I need people that are willing to put in the time and effort that it takes uh, to, to get the job done. Um, but more importantly, on, on the coachability side, um, you know, those who can take feedback and advice from me and, and sometimes, more importantly, their, their peers and, and apply it immediately. Um, I've, had, uh, I've had reps in the past that I can listen into a, a call or a pitch and I'll give them advice. Um, we'll talk through what they could, what, what they did well, um, and then what they could improve upon. And then the very next call is just a carbon copy of, of what they had just done. And it doesn't take too many times of that happening for someone, a, a manager, to realize that those folks are probably not going to last. If they're not going to take that advice, they're not going to take that feedback, they're not going to take that coaching and apply it, uh, then it's it's really just kind of a waste of the manager's time to to put in that effort. Yeah, to to stay on topic with with coachable. Um, why why do you think uh, coachability is is really important? Like, what makes people coachable, and what do you think makes someone more coachable versus another? Sure. So uh, I, I think I just said why coachability is important. You know, they, they have to be able to to take that uh, um, that that coaching and that advice and, and put it towards improvement. Um, and, and I and I think coachability comes down to self awareness and a little bit of humility. Um, if if someone's fooling themselves into thinking that their way is is the best way. Um, when in fact there is, you know, s- some improvement that's needed, um, they either need to, you know, get over that ego or or try something new. Um, so w- when when looking at someone's resume, when it, when I'm in the hiring process, I'm always looking for some kind of experience in in a team environment, um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be sports, um, but you know, someone who is involved in a team sport, uh, that resume always kind of floats up to the top with me. 
Um, but really, I'm looking for something where they were involved in a group that, that pushed each other towards a common goal and was always pushing each other towards improvement. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you, Brandon. And and someone, I think someone who is not coachable and someone who won't take anyone's advice um, is lacking like a, a very important trait or skill that most people um, in the sales industry have to possess. And you taught me, obviously, that active listening is is really important. Um, salespeople are taught that you need to improve the way you listen to a prospect. And you need to understand the whole message as opposed to just waiting for your turn to talk. And I think this also applies to listening to either your teammates or your sales managers, um, especially if you're not performing well and especially if you have that ego like you mentioned and you're, they're stuck in their ways. You can't keep doing the same processes over again and expect different results. So I totally agree with you. And to, uh, to switch gears from coaching real quick, Brandon, so I uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about motivation and gamification specifically. And so everyone knows that, that sales is a super competitive industry. Um, and gamification is uh, a good way to tap into that competitive element of sales. So do you believe um, in this systematic approach? Uh, do you think gamification can help motivate reps to perform better? Yeah, I, I absolutely think that, uh, you know, keeping a friendly, competitive environment is, is very important within a sales team. Um, but I, I think it's important to uh, both reward individual achievement, achievement as well as hitting team goals. Um, I think if you put too much focus on the individuals, um, they will then just be all out for themselves. But if you put too much emphasis on a team goal, then you, you'll end up with folks who are, um, you know, really relying on others to, to take them over the, the finish line. Yeah, I remember, I, I do remember specifically at, at, at Bizzo too that you always try to re reward the team, but also uh, reward us individually as well. So we used to have competitions all the time. And I actually recently found some gift cards um, I, they're actually worth over $500 that you gave me over three years ago that I haven't redeemed yet. So uh, um, thank you for that. And those extra incentives, you know, always helped our team work a lot harder. So, um, so yeah, also Brandon, uh, you've, you've managed um, multiple SDR teams for multiple companies now. So over the years, the metrics and specific activities that SDRs complete uh, in order to get an opportunity have changed. So what kind of, data points do you typically collect and analyze to help your reps achieve their quota? Yeah, so, um, you know, on an SDR side, uh, of course, you need to work very closely with the the, the sales managers, and you, you have to know what the, their goals are. You have to be aligned with them. Um, so it, it's really working backwards to see, you know, how many opportunities are, are needed for them to hit those goals. And so from there, it's you know, how, how much activity is, is necessary to, to get those opportunities in place. So, you know, um, I, I really look at, at the activity level. So how many calls are my reps making on a, on a daily basis? How many emails are, are they sending? Um, but then also, you know, I, I look at the, the conversion rates. Um, because if I have someone who's making 100 calls a day and setting up meetings for reps that are, are just going nowhere, um, then it, it's time to you know step back and refocus their their calls, refocus their priorities in in in, in improving the the quality. So while the activity level is important, uh, the conversion rate is is even more so. Right, I totally agree. Um, so speaking of of activity, um, what are what are some of your favorite sales enablement tools uh, and, and technologies that your teams have used either currently or in the past, and which one's your favorite specifically? All right. Well, we, we've used a, a ton, so uh, I'm just going to focus on, on a few here for you. Um, so so uh, ToutApp and, and Yesware are, are both great. Um, they are, are huge time savers. So, you know, when you have reps that are wanting to send out, uh, you know, 50 or 60 emails a day, and making sure that, that none of these touches are, are falling through the cracks. 
Um, using a tool like ToutApp or Yesware is, is great for scheduling those. You can put an entire email campaign in ahead of time and uh, you know, not, have to, not have to worry about it until you know, either someone responds or it's time to, to start another campaign. Um, plus, you can track um, what, what emails are being opened, what emails are getting clicked on, um, what's being read. Um, and then you can also see, you can do A-B testing with uh, different templates to see um, you know, which emails are getting the best responses. Um, and then I, I would be remiss to, to not talk about LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Um, it's an a absolutely amazing product. And if, you're, if a sales team is not doing social selling right now, then they are really missing the boat. Um, it, it's a great tool for sourcing those leads, um, and, and you can just keep a, a constant eye on your, uh, your inventory of, of, of people to see you know, who's coming into those roles that you want to talk to, who's leaving, who's moving up. Um, so Sales Navigator is probably number one on my list. Great. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've used most of those tools as well while I was working for you and at other companies too. Um, I mean, yeah, Sales Navigator, obviously, in terms of social selling is, is a powerful tool. Um, loved using Tout App. Our company still uses that as well um, to tether emails and, you know, to share templates with your team and obviously to see the open rates and to see if your prospects have actually shared um, that email, obviously with other decision makers. So definitely powerful tools. Um, I think that was our last that last question I had for you, Brandon. So um, now to the Q and A. So I see that we do have um, a few questions have been submitted. Um, so yeah, Brandon, here's here's the first question I see. Uh, SDRs can be impatient and want to be an AE very quickly, uh, maybe after 12 months. So what are your thoughts on that? How do you handle these types of SDRs? And what do you think is the realistic time to promote? Well, that really comes down to starting at the hiring process. Um, you and your HR team and your, your recruiters have to be on the same page on, on this and, and, and giving that same message. So it's really letting, letting these folks know ahead of time what kind of commitment you're looking for in the role and, and making them understand why. Um, you know, as an SDR manager, I cannot constantly be working with a green team, right? So if I'm promoting someone every six months, you know, really it takes two to three months for an SDR, in my opinion, to get good at the role. So uh, then I'll have them in that, in that ramped period for three months and then they're wanting to go. Or if it's, even if it's 12 months, you, there's there's lots of turnover in this role, and so uh, you just need to set that time commitment ahead of time. But also during that time, you need to let them know why why this role is important and the coaching that they're going to be getting. You really have to have a system set up, and I, I like to break mine out into three month uh, increments where. In the first three months, you know, these are the learnings. Um, you know, it, it's really ramping up, learning the, the process and the, and the procedures within the, the company. The next three months is becoming those, that, that product expert. The, and, the, and the next three months is learning more about the actual sales process within the company. And then that, that, that final three months, uh, if you're going with a 12-month period, is um, learning the, the actual sales process that the AEs go through. Um, now, I, I typically extend it out a little bit farther than that. Uh, my SDRs know ahead of time that I'm looking for a 15 to 18 month commitment from them. And really, I've, I've rarely run into a problem um, w with, with people wanting to jump ahead if, if they know all of this ahead of time. And I will tell you, the one time that I did, uh, they wanted to become an AE and ended up leaving the company because someone else gave them an AE opportunity. And within three months, they were calling me asking for their job back because they were not ready for the role that they moved into. Gotcha. Thanks for that, Brandon. Um, let's see. I have a few other questions that have come in. Um, let's see. 
So someone else asked, let's see. If you've been an SDR for too long beyond 24 months, it looks like you're not a game changer. What is your take on this? Do you think people should move on if they've been an SDR for over two years? I think I think it depends. I think it depends on, you know, what their motivations are. Um, you know, I've had some folks that have just been really successful. They they've uh done what they want to do as uh, as an SDR and and want to continue doing that. Um if if they're not if if they're not looking to move on to a sales role uh or or a closing role, I don't know if you should force them into it. Um, but if they are putting up the, the numbers that you need from them and uh, making your team successful, uh, I don't know if I would worry about it a whole lot. Um, now, if it is someone who has expressed, you know, I really want to be an AE, and they're just not getting there, they're, they're not putting up the numbers necessary to move to that next level, they're not uh, gaining the skills that they need to get there, then I think it's time to to reevaluate and take a look at them and and see you know is this really the path that you want to be on, and is this the right place for you to be on that path? Okay, great. Um, let's see. Got a couple more questions coming in. Let's see. Um, so how do how do you as a sales coach adapt to a changing environment, whether it's the product or like a reorg with the team. How do you how do you adapt to that as a sales coach? Hmm. Um, so as far as you know, new products coming on, uh, I think it, it, it's really a matter of working closely with the the marketing department, the the product department, and um, getting getting that training set up for your team uh, with with the experts. Uh, to make sure that they are, are fully aware of all the the features and benefits of of the new products, um, and and letting them know, you know, if if products are getting sunsetted, uh, have them be very clear on on timelines there. Um, what, what what was the other part of that as far as uh, ad adapting to to what? So it was adapting to uh, a change of product, um, or if there was a uh, like a reorg um, as well. So because okay. the, the, we, we kind of went through that, I guess, at, at LinkedIn when we were doing just purely outbound and then we went to like an inbound marketing role specifically. So I guess maybe you could relate to that that scenario. Sure, Sh sure. Um, you know, we, we just went through something like that here. We we just uh, merged with a, another company and added a, a another group of sales uh, or AEs on board. And so we had to change all of our territories here. And th the key to it is, is just communication from the start. Um, you, you can't just surprise people with um, a complete change of territory or a complete reorganization of, of the sales team. You have to let them know that it's coming, be transparent with all that communication, and then um, you know, work with them, you know, answer all their questions, uh, you know, as truthfully as you, you possibly can. I, I know as management we cannot, you know, fully open the kimono to absolutely everything, but um, you have to be as transparent as possible. And um, just you're going to have to meet with each SDR, each sales rep individually to to go over their concerns um, and and make sure you follow through on any questions that they have. I mean, if, if they have a question for you that you can't answer at the time or don't have the answer to, don't just say, I'll get back to you. Actually get back to them with the correct information. Gotcha. Um, we've got time for a couple more questions. And if we don't, if Brandon doesn't answer your question, uh, we can send you guys uh, an individual email um, to address those questions after the webinar. Uh, so another question just came in, Brandon. So I know we did this uh, at Bizzo and LinkedIn, but do you do you pair your SCRs with with Big Brother with like a, a sales executive or an accountant executive for either training purposes? Um, yeah. So um, that's a great question. Uh, right right now, um, I have my entire team, they are paired up uh, on, on the national. We, so we have two teams. We have a national and a regional team. The national folks, it's two AEs to one SDR. 
And then on the regional team, it's one AE to one SDR. Um, and, and I do this for uh, a variety of reasons, um, but one of which is it's a great mentoring program. Uh, you know, these, these SDRs are working with a, a veteran sales rep, um, so learning how to spot those target accounts, you know, put, put target lists together, and, and really work on the strategy of things. Um, also, it, it helps to, to break out those territories and, and helps with our uh, uh, rules of engagement w within the team. Um, so they know they just can't go after accounts that are, are owned by, by another AE. Um, and, and I think, and I think um, you don't really want to go more than two AEs to one SDR. Once you get past that point, um, a lot of things get lost in translation. You know, you can get used to working with, with two people and adapting to their styles, but once you have to do three or four, that's, it's going to make the SDR a, a lot less productive uh, and, and the sales team overall a lot less productive. Gotcha. Thanks. Uh, so I guess we have time for one more question, Brandon. So let's see. This question says, uh, how do you create the mind shift in a, a sales manager to see the value of, of moving to a coaching approach um, as opposed to focusing on, on the results uh, and just hitting your number, um, especially when your time is limited as a manager because you have your own sales targets and your own quota? So how do you sure. shift the mind yeah, and to get people to focus less on the number and to focus actually more on the coaching aspect of, of the role? Well. Well, I, I don't. I don't know if it's so much of a of, of a mind shift. I mean, you, you still focus on the results, but you just focus on the results of what that coaching is is doing for your team. Um, you know, if if you see someone who is is underperforming, and um, you sit down with them and for you know an hour a week and do some coaching with them, you'll quickly see that their numbers are going up. Um, and so you're still focusing on those results. I don't know if it's it's much of a, a mind shift. Um, it's what what is it the the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting the same results. Well, right. I mean if 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 your if your salespeople are doing the same thing over and over again, and you're letting them do the same things over and over again, and they're still underperforming, then your your numbers your results are not going to go up. So you have to sit down. I mean I I don't think. If, if you need a mind shift to tell you that coaching is the way to go, then, you know, maybe, maybe sales management isn't your speed. <laughs> so. Right. No, yeah, sense? I totally, yeah, no, that totally makes sense. Uh, and agree with you as well. I think one of the issues though, again, like I alluded to earlier in the presentation is that, you know, people just do that for the ramping period, right? I know that's subjective and that's on a personal level, um, but still a lot of co like managers, Um, she always is, is coaching and training and always helping with either the messaging or jumping on phone calls with the account executives just to try to close the deal and to help them improve, even with people that have been here for you know six months to a year. So, so I think that's a big challenge that must be addressed, that, that even if these people are more senior and if they're doing well, there's always more room for improvement. Um, and there's always you know, time for a manager to coach their reps even if they've been here for a while and even if they're doing well. So, so yeah, thanks. Thanks so much, Brandon. Uh, it looks like our time is, uh, is come to an end. Uh, Brandon and I will, uh, sort through the questions and message you guys, uh, individually. But again, thank you so much, Brandon, uh, for your time today. I really appreciate it. Uh, th thank you, Amira. I, I hope this, uh, was, was, uh, of a little bit of a help to, to someone out there. So I agree. All right. Well, take care, Brandon. And Thank you for joining, everybody. Have a great day.